Somebody this morning, shake their hand. Tell them good to have them in the house of the Lord this morning. I'm going to worship a few minutes today.
coming up uh, pretty short and we've got several different things that we're looking to do. Uh, just Diane brought this to us on Wednesday in August. Just to show you what what God can do through little things. We put out those envelopes on the table for August for so much per day. If we had filled them up with everything that was written on those envelopes, it would have been $764. I got those 31 envelopes back. In those 31 envelopes was $1,844. We have had two offerings, three offerings, and with the vegetable sales that was done, in the last month out of just, this is above tithes and offerings. I mean, this is above what we would normally have given we have taken in $4,952 Amen for our project. Amen. As of right now, we've got one more offering today. We're going to do this for a month. Amen. I have some envelopes for September in my Bible. There's still some on the table if you'd like to participate. Amen. It's a simple thing. You just pick a day of the month. And it's, it has September the sub with a sixth or whatever, and out beside it there's a, a uh, the, there's a, just a simple dollar amount. You give exactly what's in that dollar amount. If you want to give above, some of them last month were for ten dollars. Some of them had sixty, eighty, a hundred. Some of them had more. So if you would like to participate, and this is strictly volunteer. Amen. As of right now, the project that we have scheduled to start on October the second in our fellowship hall. Amen. Because of your giving, that has been paid for without having to dip one thing into the treasury that we had when we started. Amen. That is something to give God praise for. Amen. Not only that, when it's all said and done, the treasury will be more because it's not going to cost everything 
that we have. Oh, yeah. You're going to see a lot of changes in the next little bit. That will start on October the 2nd. That week, it's going to take more than a couple of days. Well, Brother Jimmy's going to come in at night during that week. If you can help at any time, that Wednesday, we won't have any midweek service the first week of October. So uh, we, we'll have all that tore out. We're going to try to tear it out and get it back in. Uh, but mostly that Friday and Saturday, uh, a lot of you have said you could donate a couple of days to come and help us work. That Friday and Saturday, we're going to hit it really hard to try to finish it up and get it back together. The, the restroom will have to be redone and everything. So you can help at any time on those two days or at night during that week. Just come by. There'll be plenty to do. Ladies, if you'd like to come, there'll be plenty to especially the Saturday when the project is completed. We hopefully can get it done by Saturday morning. There'll be a lot of cleaning to do. That's going to be a dusty project a lot of things so if you'd like to come and help get uh everything straightened back up for sunday I mean, we would appreciate that just want to give you that before go by and look at it on the board amen god is faithful amen and you know what by my giving you look at me i ain't missed one meal yet amen i ain't lost one mountain dew or one pepsi or one ice cream bar amen one pop tart amen I was an inside joke from last week. Amen. Ate that pop tart, please fire in 10 minutes. Caleb told his mama, you throw them in the trash for next Sunday. Amen. So, you know, couldn't have no pop tarts. Amen. I didn't find the strawberries, so I got a blueberry this morning. I don't know if that'd be better or worse. We'll see you in a little bit. Right? Amen. So, you, God has blessed us. Amen. And if you will continue to bless Him, Amen, He will make it worthwhile. Amen. He already has. To look around this morning and see your faces and see the smiling faces. I look forward all week just to get to come in and see your face, hug your neck, and tell you I'm good to see you again. We've made it through another week. You know what? Until we make it to the other side and see each other face to face around his throne, amen, we, will need, we need to be together and pull together in unity and in love and allow God to touch us and bring us to new heights, amen. I'm just amazed at what I hear of what God is doing, amen. Not only numbers, but spiritually, God is growing. It's our Sunday school lesson this morning. God is growing us spiritually and in every way, amen. So as you continue to give, amen, it is paying off, amen. So uh, this morning, the ushers are going to come. They're going to pass by you this morning uh, for the first offering will be tithes and offering. And I know we've, you've given a lot so far. If you have something you want to give in this last offering for the floor, you do that. If you can't, don't worry about that. Amen. You do what you can do, what you feel God has laid on your heart, and everything will be fine today. Amen. Brother Rich, would you pray over this offering this morning? Father, we thank you for your blessing. We thank you for, for the surplus of all of the things that you need. Thank you for the
that God is dealing. I know he is because he's dealing with me. And I know he's dealing with some of you. And there's some things that uh, need to be worked. And in, in, in the next little while, we're going to have some. Uh, I've already talked to some. Next week, we're going to sit down with our children's department and go through some things. It's growing by leaps and bounds back there. Amen. You go and sit ahead of the Sunday school room this morning. Her table was running over. Amen. It's full in there now. Thank God for every single one. Every every one in the nursery. Amen. So we got to have some some. We got to make some plans. Get some things started. So we're going to start with our children's department, our youth department, and then uh, this these these musicians up here. Amen. Going to meet with them. Our councilmen, our trustees. Amen. Are, are going to be a vital part. It's just, I am a vital part of the things moving forward. Amen. Now is the time. Amen. Now is the time. Amen. And God has just so burned for the last, at least the last, especially the last four weeks, that now is the time. Amen. I've, I've been in places like this, and I told somebody yesterday, I don't even remember who it was, I've been to these places before. And I'll be I'll be transparent enough to tell you that I've at times I've missed it. I mean a, a fear and, and, and worry about some things will cause you to miss the will of God and to miss the, the, the moment. I mean, there are points of destiny in your life and my life and in a church life and in your family's life. But, I mean, there's a point of destiny that God is bringing you to in a place where he intends for you to be blessed and he intends for things to change in your life and your home and your family. And if we miss those times when God is moving and God is pulling so much, then we missed uh, that window and God help us not as a people, as an individual as families, as husbands and then as husbands as wives we, we don't need to miss these times when we know that God is moving and God is wanting to do things Acts chapter 2 and then verse number 1, God dealt with me about a word Sometimes it just little thing just kind of pop out to me. In Acts chapter two, verse number one, it said that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all gathered with one. Somebody say accord. They were all gathered in one accord, in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as a mighty rush or a rushing mighty wind and it filled the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat on each of them and they all were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance go with me to Acts chapter number 12 very quickly Acts chapter number 12 I want to read to you something along the same lines that has this same word that I want to uh, uh, talk to you about this morning. So now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread, or the time of Easter as we know it today. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison. And delivered him unto four quintiers of soldiers unto him. Sixteen soldiers uh, to guard one man. <laughs> Sixteen soldiers to guard one preacher. <laughs> Amen. I, I think Peter had stirred up some stuff, don't you? Yeah. Amen. The, uh, 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 intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Now when Herod would have brought him forth that same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers uh, were before the door of the prison. Uh, and the angel of the Lord came unto him, and the light shined in the prison, and smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, uh, saying, Arise, go quickly. Uh, and the chains fell off from his hand. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind thy sandals. Uh, and so he did. 
And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about you and follow me. And he went out and followed him and wished not it was true which was done by the angel, but he thought that he had saw a vision. Look at verse 10. But when he passed the first and the second ward and came to the iron gate that leadeth into the city, which opened unto him of its own accord. accord. Open unto him accord, unto its own accord, and they went out and passed through onto the street, uh, for with the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from the expectation uh, of the people uh, of the Jews. You may be seated this morning. May God add his blessings to his holy word this morning. God began to deal with me about this, this subject for today. And I looked in the scripture and I began to read uh, through that story of Peter. And, and, and when God really began to open that up to me in the beginning, I really didn't understand the fullness uh, of what he was trying to show me uh, until yesterday and last night uh, as I began to pray as I laid there. Uh, and this morning, even early waking up, uh, amen, the Bible talks about uh, being in one accord. Uh, I read to you from Acts chapter 2. Uh, it said they were all in one place uh, and in one accord. Uh, the, that word in verse uh, number 2 of, of, of the book of Acts chapter 2. Uh, amen. Is a different word than I read to you uh, in verse number 12. Uh, in Acts 2 and 2. Uh, amen. It talks about uh, being in one accord. Uh, that is an adverb. Uh, that means to be uh, Coming together. It means to be unanimous. You know what it means to be unanimous? If you have a vote for something and the vote is unanimous, what does that mean? That means it's a 100% vote, right? That means that there's no division. That means that there's no conquery. That means that there's no, uh, no separation. Everybody is in the same mind. It is unanimous. Uh, as God began to deal with me about that last night, uh, I began to wonder uh, if we look around at the place uh, where we are as a church, uh, and you may look at this on a personal level uh, in your family. Uh, amen. Are we in uh, agreement? The book of Amos says this. Uh, how can two walk together uh, except they agree? Uh, how can two walk together uh, except they agree? Uh, how, Brother Kyle, uh, can ten walk together uh, unless they agree? Uh, how can we as 30 uh, or 40 as 50, uh, how can we walk together? Uh, amen, come in and help me. Just walk with me just a minute. Uh, amen, if you and I uh, are going to go over to where Sister Diane is at, uh, amen, we have to get to agreement. Uh, are we going to go this way uh, or are we going to go that way? Uh, amen, it would make more sense to me to go this way uh, because it's shorter. Uh, amen, you preached the message of that though. Uh, Sometimes we need to go the long way around uh, to get where we need to go. Uh, amen. Different days uh, and different times uh, are going to call for different situations uh, and different ways uh, for God to do things. Uh, but it does not matter uh, if it's your way uh, or my way uh, as long as we're following God's direction uh, to get to where we want to go. Uh, amen. That's what counts. Uh, we must get together. Uh, amen. We must be unanimous. Uh, if you go your way and I go mine, we're going to very quickly pull apart. We are not in a place right now where we can be pulled apart. We are not in a place right now where we cannot be separated. Amen. But we need to be in one mind and in one accord. Amen. We need to be unanimous. Amen. Now I'm going to go ahead this morning. Amen. Some of these ministers here the first time, some of them went their first time to hear me preach. Amen. I'm just a good old country boy. Amen. I just lay it out like God gives it to me. Amen. We have to be unanimous. Amen. We need to come together. We need to understand, number one, that it's not my agenda and it's not my plans and it's not my direction because I don't have the answers. Amen. I thought not only but do I have the answers, but I don't have the provision and I don't have the power. 
power. Amen. But I know one. And as long as we will get with him and get in his agenda and follow his direction and pull together as one. Amen. Psalms 133 and 1. How beautiful and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. Amen. We need to be unanimous. And I can stay there a while. But I'm going to move on this morning for the sake of time. Amen. We need to be unanimous in God's direction, in God's agenda. God is the one that has brought us this far. God is the one that has brought us to this point. And it has to be God that carries us on. Romans chapter 5, I didn't give you this one, Sister Hannah. Romans chapter 5 and verse number 16 says this, that they may be with one mind and with one mouth glorifying God the Father, even our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I can't look. Oh, Lord, help me. Here we go. I, I can't say one thing with my mouth and my actions show something else. Let us be with the same, the same mind and speak with the same mouth. The only way you can talk it like you walk it is just got to become a part of who you are. If you're going to talk it and walk it, it's got to be you. Amen. It can't be. Oh, we're living in a world today where there's so many people that are trying to put on a show and they're trying to follow every wind and every doctrine. Amen. Facebook, she talked about it in Sunday school. Amen. It's loaded today with preachers on every corner. And I've heard some of it that won't do to boil hot water on Sunday morning. Amen. You better be careful what you listen to. You better be careful who you follow. You better know what to work in. Amen. It's got to become who you are. Amen. If we're going to become a unanimous body, and we, we're getting to be a pretty good, don't take this as a fat joke, because I, amen, we're going to be, we're getting to be a pretty big body. Amen. We're getting to be a pretty good number. Amen. Thank God. Every single one. Amen. Do you know what? The bigger the body, sometimes the harder it is to get it together. Some. Amen. The bigger I get, the more I have to expand my belt. Hey, sent Wendy and Caleb the other day. My belt just gives slam out on me. Send them to Walmart. Bring me home a belt. When you said Caleb pull one off the shelf and put it around him, and it wrapped about almost twice. And he said, that ought to fit him. <laughs> he said, oh boy. He brought it home, I put it on, pulled it around, put it through this belt loop, put it through that belt loop, and it was still flopping. I said, son, who do you think you're buying that belt for? He said, well, that it was, it, it was just a little bit bigger than me. I said, but have you noticed, you ain't that same little kid you used to be trying on belts either. Amen, he's big as me. Amen. And he thought he was bigger than him, it ought, to, it ought to fit me. Now I'm just gonna be honest with you, going them pop tarts. That belt's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty good. <laughs> the bigger you get, and I got some of his attention back. It works the same way spiritually. You mean God's trying to grow us spiritually? He's trying to pull us together in a unanimous situation, so that when He grows us. We, amen, the same thing, just like that belt that used to fit, hey, once we, the, the, the same things ain't going to work, the same things ain't going to fit, amen, God's going to have to grow us uh, and move us uh, and give us more things and more power, amen, and more provision and more direction, and we got to come together and say, God, whatever you want, that's what we want, but if you brought us here, you're going to take us forward, we need to be unanimous, amen. We need to have the same mind that we say with our mouth. And we need to have the same mouth. It was, I, I didn't mean to say that. My Bible says, from the abundance of the heart, let the mouth speak. How do we 
And I'm, I'm not going to stay here for just more. Just throw this out there. Amen. How can we expect people to have a hunger for something that we don't speak well about? How can we have people, uh, amen, to have a desire to come to a place uh, if we don't have something good uh, to say about that? Uh, amen, you may leave here today. Uh, amen, we, 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 me and Wendy, it came out of church years ago. Uh, we went down to, we, we went down to uh, Loosedale uh, for the Mike, for the Mike, uh, Mike McLeod's church. Kelly was a little old boy. I thought I had preached my guts out that night. We left there to go down to Pizza Hut. We got out on the street. Little old fella pulled up behind my seat. He said, Daddy, I got something to tell you. I said, okay, well, what's that? He said, that's got to be about the worst sermon I've ever heard in all my life. I said, well, I appreciate that. He said, you know what? He said, I, I, I heard I done decided that when, we, when I grow up, I'm going to do what you do. I'm going to be the preacher. And I said, you do. He said, he said if somebody's going to get up there and holler, if I will get, if I will get to be me. <laughs> you, you may leave here this morning, and the music may not be exactly right, or the Sunday school may not have been exactly right. Amen. And, 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 and if you want to sit here long enough, uh, you can find something to nitpick. You can find something to say about this or that or the other. Uh, amen. Uh, but if it's in us uh, and it's in our mind, uh, it's going to come out of our mouth. Uh, it's going to come out of our mouth. Uh, amen. God uh, is looking for a church uh, and he's building a church. Uh, amen. That's got something positive. This world is full of doom and gloom and they don't need to hear any more of that. All they need to know is that Jesus still loves them and he's still on the throne and he's able to do anything that they need in their life. Amen. We need to say it with our mouth and believe it with our heart. We need to be in one accord, in one mind, in one place. And I want to hit that next word very carefully, and I'm going to move into chapter 12. It said, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Suddenly. That word suddenly there means something that happened unaware. Or something that happened unexpectedly. Now let's go back and set this context just a minute. Jesus had told them, go to the upper, to, uh, the upper room and tarry until you be endued with power. They were expecting, they were had, had been sent there waiting on something to happen. But that word suddenly means that even though they were expecting it, it still caught them a little bit off guard. It, it still caught them a little bit on the way. Amen. I don't know if you looked around here lately. But there's a lot of things that seem to just have exploded. And it's things people let, well, my preacher, we've been praying for this and praying, praying for that. And, and we've been believing God. And my mind went back, uh, amen, to last year. Uh, right after we first, and some of those promises that God gave. Uh, and all of a sudden, the last couple of weeks, uh, God uh, had, has opened some of those scales uh, off of my eyes. Uh, and said, uh, you wouldn't even need you, you told me uh, you was looking for it. Uh, you said you were, but, uh, has it not even caught some of us unaware? It's kind of like God's putting things in overdrive. It's kind of, kind of like God's put things in overdrive. Amen. When we were waiting for it, and then it begins to happen. What do we do with it then? Suddenly. Do you know what I found? He's a suddenly kind of God. He's a suddenly kind of God. Suddenly, 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 when Lazarus laid in the tomb, even now, or even now, I know you can raise him. Even now, I know you can suddenly, and even things are happening suddenly. Acts chapter 12 goes on, and there's a lot that happens between Acts chapter 2 in Acts chapter 12 with Paul and Silas and the other ministries that, that's going on. And Peter is sprinkled all in the middle of this. But Acts chapter 12 starts off that 
that Herod had just killed James. He had killed him with the sword, which was one of, of the most uh, humiliating deaths of that day. Uh, other than being crucified, uh, to be put out in the street uh, and have some authority over you to stick you with a sword and take your life was a humiliating thing. James had been killed with the, uh, he had killed James, the brother of John. And he, he saw that it pleased the people and so he went and took Peter. But it just happened to be on the Friday. Oh, if there's about two hours of preaching that I can't get this morning. He took Peter in prison on Friday before Easter was on Sunday. And he said, come Monday morning, I'll kill him. They, oh, boy. Uh, uh, here we go. I'll let the Holy Ghost preach that one to you. Amen. There's a lot of things that happens between Friday and Monday. Amen. God's got a, oh, I might as well stop just a minute. God's got a record, amen, of changing things from Friday to Monday. What man expects to happen in God's time is not going to happen because he still got the ability to step in. And when the enemy would love to destroy, but they put him in when they put Jesus in that tomb on Friday. They thought it was over, but before Monday could come, victory had been delivered. Oh. Peter was arrested on Friday, and they put him in prison and delivered unto him to four from 16 soldiers. They had shifts round the clock. Peter was sitting in the middle of that dungeon. Now, I want you to get this picture. He's got a soldier chained to him on one arm. A soldier chained to him on this arm. Two soldiers at the door. Four soldiers guarding the three gates that went out of the prison. They didn't intend for Peter to get away. They did not intend for Peter to get away. And I titled this, The Now Call. Peter in prison, locked up, in bond. Everybody is waiting on him to be killed on Monday, except for a small little group of people that are somewhere in the house of a, where a servant, and I don't have time, I started to just stop preach on Rhoda. Amen. She's at the end of this story. Rhoda came to the door. After a few I'm getting ahead of myself. Peter's in prison. He's been told Monday morning, the same sword that killed James is going to be your fate. But there's a group of people right down the street, and the Bible said that prayers were made without ceasing by the church for him. For him for him. Whether you know it or not in this building, those of there are you that are sitting on these pews, that there has been prayer being made unceasingly for you. There's been prayer meetings over your family. There's been prayer meetings over your families, over your homes, and over your ministries, and over your problems. Because it seemed like for so long, Brother Philip, we've been kind of bound up by life. I'm preaching to the choir this morning. I'm preaching to your preacher. Amen. Your preacher got some decisions to make. Amen. Man, Sister Wendy's done made some. We just got to, we we're just waiting on God to do it the way he wants to do it. Amen. Amen. I told y'all a couple weeks ago, you ain't got the same preacher you had six months ago. Amen. I was riding down the road this week, Monday morning. Amen. Sunday morning, I preach my guts out around this place. God anointed me like I haven't felt him. I rode Monday morning. I couldn't get that out of my mind. And I said, God, you're the one that put this back inside of me. You're the one that lit this fire inside of me again. You're the one that poured this anointing on me again when I didn't even ask for it or really didn't even want it. But God, you gave it to me and you put it in my heart. Now you got to make it happen. And he said, well, son, you just sit back and watch what I can do. And God is moving us. It's a nail cut. 
I call. I've been bound to some things. I've been chained to some things. <laughs> Just go ahead put a thing on last night where that lady was talking about her wants. Man, her wants. I've had some wants. God gets a hold of you just right. He changes what you want. Amen. When he changes what's in here. Amen. When he changed your direction from those construction jobs and that big money and all those things. And he put those babies in front of your face. Amen. It changes your want. Amen. What this man's want is right now. His want is to do what he done Friday. And stand before them young people. And preach the gospel. Amen. Those babies in that back room. These old, them back there. Because somebody's wants have changed. Amen. Peter had a call. He wanted to go back and fish. He wanted to go back to what was comfortable. But God said, it's time to get out. But but it landed him in prison. And he's chained to two soldiers on each side. And in the middle of the night, the Bible said that an angel walked up to Peter and said, it's going to bring a flashlight. Amen. Uh, never mind. What we do for Hey, Peter. Hey, Amen. I can't hardly get from the kitchen to the bedroom without a phone no more with a GPS. Angel, shine that light on Peter and said, hey Peter, the first thing I want you to notice is that didn't nobody have to open those doors for God to get where Peter was. He didn't have to go to heaven and say, can I get a hall pass? to go visit the prisoner. <laughs> Somebody's in jail. You got to go to the sheriff. My pa and all worked jail ministry. And that, that, down there used to have that site ward. Down there was a young lady down there that got in that site ward. And my pa and all was walking by that room one morning. And he saw her had her face up against that door. And she had this wild look in her eyes. And she beat on the door when he went by and got his attention. And all he had to do was look into her eyes. And God connected something with her. He called the sheriff's department and said, who's that young lady? in that site ward. And they said, well, it's so. Jimmy Dale was, was sheriff at that time. And he said, that's so-and-so. And Tony said, I want to go see her. And he said, you can't go see her. People can't get in there. He said, you don't understand. God said, I've got to get in that room where she's at. He said, well, if you want to take a chance, you go right on in there. Next Sunday morning, she had her face up against that glass. And she knocked on it. And he opened the door and walked inside. A long story short, that woman today is in her same mind in Janice, Mississippi, teaching a children's class. But the God believe is I don't have to have man's opinion. God don't have to have man's authority. He's got authority to get wherever you are and break down every barrier that he has to take to do what he's got to do. God didn't have to have Herod's permission to get to Peter. He walked in and said, Peter, wake up. Peter's kind of deadheaded like me. Angel said, Peter, get up. Somewhere along this time, unexpectedly, and somehow, when the angel shined the light, change fell off. There are people today, I feel one of them last time is coming up. There are so many people today that have this belief that it takes a seance or a ritual 
or it takes this big old demonstration or you got to be embarrassed in front of the world all he's got to do is come to where you are and speak your name and those chains will be broken and delivered and sent about two hours more preaching. It's time for some of us to wake up. He's shining the light in some of your faces. Rich, Rich, it's time to get out of here. Rich, if you don't lose You realize if Peter hadn't got up, I'm gonna get to some shot around in a minute again. But there's gonna come a time in your life if you don't move, the devil will get you. He's after you. He had a plan for Peter, and he's got a plan for Kyle and Guy and and and, and Anthony and Wendy and Aaron. And he, he's got a plan for you. Wake up. Peter. Peter, you you got to get out of here. You're coming. He did. When Paul and Silas was in there, they began to sing and they began to praise and God shook the earth. But this time he shook Peter. He's shaking the church enough. Now he's shaking you. Oh, God help me. I laid down there last night and God began to speak to me. And there are some of you that have things that have happened in your family and in your home and in your business and in your job and with your kids and it has shaken the very core of who you are. But now, 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 God said, I've tried to get to you that way. I've shaken everything around you. So now I'm going to make it personal. I'm coming to you. He didn't shake the jail this time. In Paul and Silas' situation, it woke the jailer up. And the jailer's household was saved. But this time, he specifically went after Peter. And he said, come on, I'm calling you out now. Some of you, he said, come on out. Not tomorrow. You can't wait till tomorrow. You can't wait till Monday. Because if you wait till Monday, the sword is after you. You've got to come now. Now. Listen, the jailers never woke up. The chains fell off. Angel said, Peter, put your shoes on. Peter put his shoes on. Peter, put your coat on. There's another two hours just back. You got to get dressed when you get caught. You got you to put, you put your clothes on. You got you to gotta have your, you got to be prepared. The Bible said that Peter got up and the angel said, Lord, I pray you follow me. Follow me. You see, you didn't ask me this time which way we're going. He just said, follow me. And it said that Peter got up and he followed the angel out. And this is what I still don't understand about all the story because if you study this out, he said when he got to the main gate that leadeth into the city, but what about the first two gates? He was in the inner prison and there were three more checkpoints that were guarded by soldiers. And somehow, 
Peter just fought right through. The same way he gets into you, he gets you out. The Bible said that the disciples were in an upper room and the door was shut. And he appeared unto them. Anyway, I don't got time to read. The Bible said that when they got to the main gate that led into the city, it opened up of its own accord. We have been in one accord, in one mind, and now God is beginning to open things up on their own accord. Things that he intends to open up. That word accord is a, a totally different Greek word, and it means to, for something that is self-moved. Something, and I love, this, I preach this time and time and time again, but it means something that is spontaneous. Something that is spontaneous. Something that is unexpected. Something that happens out of the ordinary. There are some of you in this room that God is wanting to do some things into your life that's going to be different than it's ever been before. It's going to change you. It's going to bring you out of us of the place where you were. If I had time this morning, I'd preach you three ways. He wants to bring you out of where you are. He wants to bring you into fellowship and up higher. So I don't have time to preach all that this morning. But you just remember he wants you out of where you were and in him and above the circumstances of your life. Something that happens spontaneously. Something that happens of its own accord when you least expect it. When you least expect it. God's timing is not mine. When God decides to do things, I don't understand. Why God has chosen now is still a mystery to me. Until you stop and look around and spiritually begin to see. Because said he talked to those young men at that football game. Or that in that cafeteria down there, and he began to talk to them. He began to ask questions, and they began to raise their hand, and and they began to interact with those. There's a hunger in the world right now that has never been before. There is a desire in the world God is pulling and he is drawing in these last days and the time is now. Amen. We don't need to worry about how, when, where, how it's going to happen. Amen. Something that, and I've been preaching all this time to get to that one word. He wants to do some things that are spontaneous. He wants to do some things that are out of the ordinary. He is calling you from where you were into a deeper relationship. Jim said last night, I want to sing deep, deep water. God help us to get into it. We can go. Oh, we've been walking around in this kind of world. We've been walking around being content with everything that's happening. My God, if we've ever been malcontent with the shape of the world, we ought to be malcontent today. We ought to be saying, God, you got to it. You got to change it. Some things are happening spontaneously. I laid there last night and I don't even worry in the world it came from. A thought run through my little pea brain mind. Anybody ever heard of spontaneous combustion? Just Colette mentioned that in her teaching not long ago. Spontaneous combustion is the phenomenon in which a hydrocarbon or a chemical substance 
unexpectedly burst into flames without cause. Hydrocarbon are a chemical surface that for no reason at all, no ignition, no fire, any of you older guys ever put hay in the barn? Have you ever seen somebody put hay in the barn and they leave? Like I say, and the next thing you know, the barn's on fire. Nobody lit it. Nobody set it on fire. Spontaneous combustion. Everything got just right. I went on. And it said, in ordinary combustion, the hydrocarbon is deliberately heated to its ignition point to make it burn. But in spontaneous combustion, there is an outside source that provides the heat. Or we just not in the foyer and we made the statement if you get close enough to the fire before long you're burning I went on to look through that last night and it had a picture of a simple little hot plate and it had a little piece of paper that they got down above that hot plate about six inches and they just held it there sister Diane and they held it and they held it and they held it, and they held it, and all of a sudden, the bottom of that piece of paper got enough of that fire, and it began to smolder, and it began, and, and, and it began to smoke, and all of a sudden, there was a little bit of a spark that came, and all of a sudden, from no, oh, here's about two more hours of preaching, from no immediate contact with the source of heat, ignition took place and it began to burn when oh here we go when your will lights up with his power there will be a spontaneous there will be an explosion there will be a fire that will take place it won't be ordinary it won't be planned it won't be the way we think it ought to be it'll be a spontaneous move of God it'll be a spontaneous change that'll happen We've been way too routine for way too long. It's got to happen this way. It's got to happen that way. This week, this week alone, I bet you I had half a dozen conversations with people about this church. I had a man come work on my truck. And I had to stand at nine o'clock. I had that flashlight on. Because it was so dark, we couldn't see nothing. And he wanted to know what's really happening in your church. What's really happening? One man this week asked the question, what's it really like? Friday night, sitting at the football game. What's it really like? I can't tell you what it's really like for you. I can tell you it's pretty good to me. All these, there's a hunger. I'm church of God background. Since I was raised, one man asked this week, he said, how'd you do it? I said, what do you mean? He said, ain't that a little bit different? I said, yeah, it's a little bit different. But you know what? I'm a little bit different too. I realized I had God in my little box. He had to fit. He, he's, want, he, he's want some spontaneous things. He's calling 
some of you, come on, it's time to get out of here. It's time, it's time to get out of here. It's time, it's time. You go on to read the rest of that chapter, Peter gets out of jail, he walk, walks to the gate, it opens of its own accord, he walks down the street, knocks on that door. Rhoda, and this is the perfect picture of the church today. They're in there praying, God, you got to get Peter out of there. God, you got to deliver Peter. God, you got to get him out of those shackles and bonds. And the whole time he's standing outside the door. Knocks on the door and Rhoda comes to the door and looks at it and he says, hey Rhoda, and she slams the door back. <laughs> she runs back in there and tells him, Peter's at the door. Oh honey, you're just delirious. <laughs> I've been praying for it for two days. God delivers it. Well, I just don't. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, I'm going to go ahead and be rude this morning. There's a lot of you still sitting here saying, God, are you? God, are you? When are you? And he already has. And it's already happened. And we wish not. We wish not that he's already done it. We wish not that he's done broken down the walls. And they're coming in. And they're piling in. And God's doing it. But I still don't like the way Brother Kyle teaches. Brother Barry still preaches too long. <laughs> Sister Diane is just so broke. She teaches that class back there and she gets on us so hard. I didn't like that song kind of saying this morning. <laughs> The promise, the promise is outside the door. And I, I ain't got this much time either. The answer is trying to get in. Yes. Yes. And they're in their corner. They don't know whether she's lost her mind or not. <laughs> oh, but. It, it specifically said they thought she was mad because their answer had showed up. Yes, yes. Oh Lord, some of you ain't got that part yet. I ain't leaving till you get it. You hungry? You better get it before we go. <laughs> the answer's at the door. Yeah. It's been delivered. It's been loose. The spontaneous things have already been set in motion. And he showed up. The Bible said that they went on. And Herod found out that Peter was gone. And he got so angry that he said, I'll just go before the people. In the voice of Peter. And he went out on his porch and tried to disguise his voice and made this oracle speech before the people and before he could shut his mouth he was dead there's going to come a time when God's done with jokes and God's done with playing around and God's done with amen if there's ever been a time to get real we need to get it real with God <laughs> The Bible going down to the rest to the latter part of that chapter. It starts to talk about Paul and Silas again. But you let me go find it. Let me get over there. It said in verse number 24. It said in verse 23. And he gave out a shout saying, It is the voice of God and not man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because God he gave God not the glory. And he was eaten of the worms and gave up the ghost. But, but, what I preached about last week, but the word of God grew and multiplied. My friend, you got a choice today. You can get in and go 
alone and we can go or we can sit here and be the same. But I'm here to tell you that God has started something spontaneously and it ain't going to stop. It ain't going to quit. He's going to perform his work. One way or another. I'm about to go ahead and be rude again. With me or without me. Uh, I need you. God needs you. But you know what? You need him more than he needs you. Huh? My mama said yesterday, sitting on there on, on, on her porch, she said, we can get in, or we can get out. She said, but you don't ever need, you don't ever need to be forgetful of this one thing, God can replace you. Amen. This kind of combo. We had a supervisor came in one time, looked at the company I worked for, he thought he was something else. He thought he knew it all. Never been in trucking, didn't know a thing. He come in that room one night and started a bunch of stuff. One of the guys I worked with been there for years. And they got in a real confrontation. And he said, I'm the boss around here. He said, you can't fill my seat. He looked at him and he said, son, we can get a retarded monkey to go your seat. What? I'm your boss. He said, you don't ever forget. There was some monkeys in that chair before you got here. <laughs> There's a whole lot of people can hold this microphone. But he's chosen me. And he's chosen you. And now he's saying it's your time to step into your call. It is now time. It is a now call. It's happened. He, he started to work. Now he's simply asking, are you in or are you out? Are you in? 26 years ago, I stood before a remembrance table like this one right here in that little old church downtown. And God said, today, boy, I want to know, are you in or are you out? And I said, but Lord, but he said, no, it ain't no buts today, hoss. You're going to give me an answer. Are you in? Or are you out? And I said, but Lord. And he said, but no. Today, you'll make your choice. And I've had people tell me, well, he ain't that kind of God. I'm 49 years old. I was 26. I was 23 years old. I had one man tell me, oh, you too young for God to give up on you. Don't tell me that. I know where I stood. And I knew God was serious. God been chasing me. God been after me. God been running. And the more he run to me, the more I run away. And I give him every kind of excuse. I give him every kind of pro Oh, God, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And you can sit there and you can give God all kind of excuses. And you can wallow in your misery. And you can allow your home to be busted up. Oh, God, help me. You can allow your family to be torn apart. You can allow your children to, be, to, to separate. You can allow your relationship with God to get to nothing. You can let the devil tear down everything that has been given to you by a blessing from God. Or you can quit making excuses uh, and quit running and say, God, today I just want you to know I'm in. <laughs> Wake up, son. Wake up.
wake up. It's time to get out of here. I believe this first Corinthians said that now is the time and it is high time that we awake out of our sleep because the night is far spent and the day is at hand. You're not promised tomorrow to make that choice. You're not promised to be dealt with again after this service. I would have been done about 10 minutes ago, but God just, God, there's somebody in this room right now that God is dealing with you. There is somebody in this room right now that it has, it has piled up on you. And you know God has been pulling you. And you know that there's a need. You know that there's some things you need to give up. And God said today, you better wake up. Are you in? Are you out? You can sit there till Monday and let them come with the sword if you want to. Or you can get up today and say, I'm going to fight. Come on, Peter. Follow me. You got to get out of here, son. Come on. For my soul, oh God. For my spirit, come on, sister. For my spirit shall not always strive with a man. Are you in? Are you out? But the call is a today call. It's a call for now. And he's calling you. I'd even thought about going so far this morning, and I may do it before this thing is over before very long. I don't know that I've ever seen it done, but God has been dealing with my spirit. When you call, when ministers step out, when Brother Ross and Sister Lindsay took their place, we set them forth in ministry. Sister Glenda, God has set us forth again. You may be in this room this morning for the first time. You may be a visitor. But maybe God said you need to be a part of what I'm about to set forth. I got news for you. We need you and God needs you and you need him. The rich, he's calling us now. Come on. Come on, son. Come on, son. Let it go. Give up. Give in. Get in. And let me change you. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Jesus, you just right now across this room. God, I have done my best this morning to deliver myself.